eternity. Because, you know, they have serious doubts about Miss Willard's ability to remain faithful to just one man. Shocking! But wait, there's more! They even accuse her of harboring some mystery man at her house while she was engaged to Mr. Hodges. Ooh, scandalous! I can just imagine Miss Willard sneaking guys in and out of her place like it's some secret hideout. Smooth moves, Miss Willard! He was visiting because he was a childhood friend, and I didn't tell him because I knew he'd flip out because I know how he is. And hold on tight, folks, because it turns out Miss Willard was not only engaged, but also married while keeping Mr. Hodges and his mom in the dark. What a clever little secret she had going on. Oh, and guess what? She conveniently forgot to mention that she has other kids, too. But who needs full disclosure in a relationship, right? Miss Belvins, the ultimate detective, informs the court that she always caught Miss Willard hiding her phone whenever Mr. Hodges was around. Ah, the classic hiding the phone move. It's practically a confession of guilt. And as if that wasn't enough, Miss Willard received a message from a guy she was dating who just happened to be present during the baby's birth. Talk about multitasking. Miss Blevins, you say together August split up a few times in between and broke up for good October 6, 2017. But wait, there's a twist. Mr. Hodges drops a bombshell and reveals that Miss Willard pretended to be pregnant even after giving birth. Oh, the length some people will go to for attention. But don't worry, folks, Miss Willard has an excuse. She claimed she lied because she was busy with the other guy. Well, at least she got her priorities straight. The baby was born, you felt like yeah. This is Mr. Hodge's baby. We don't even have to do The judge has had enough of Miss Willard's web of lies and demands some honesty. Finally, it's about time she fesses up to the truth. Why prolong the inevitable, right? And lo and behold, Miss Willard spills the beans. Turns out she just wanted a family with Mr. Hodges all along, but didn't want to ruin his marriage. How thoughtful of her. You say you just wanted a family. You love Mr. Hodges, but it's not just about wanting to be a family with him. Oh, look at that. Mr. Hodges, the married man with a heart of gold, declares that he still wants the baby to be his. How noble. And even Miss Belvins, the ever-loving grandma, is willing to accept the child as long as they figure out who the daddy is. Or oh, family values at their finest. Drum roll, please. The results are in, folks. Brace yourself for the big reveal. And surprise, surprise, baby Lillian is indeed Mr. Hodges' biological daughter. Well, 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 looks like the mystery is solved. You are the father. <laughs> Miss Cates is on a mission to prove that her ex-boyfriend, Mr. Gee, is the proud papa of her little munchkin, Messiah. But oh boy, Mr. Gee is convinced that someone else is the lucky father, thanks to Miss Kate's supposed extracurricular activities. This is going to be a wild ride. And guess who joins the party? Mr. Gee's sister, Miss Burns, is armed with a bag of secrets about Miss Kate's. According to her, she's witnessed Miss Kate's hanging out with multiple guys, and it didn't seem like your average coffee date. Oh no, it's way more scandalous than that. My son around all in his face. It was it was more than just no, dancing no, and all the extra. No, it was more than no. that. No, how you won't there, so hush. Miss Cates tries to defend herself by admitting that she did indeed date Mr. Gee and the other guy at the same time. Talk about multitasking. But she's pretty darn sure that Mr. Gee is the one responsible for Little Messiah's existence. She even claims to have used protection with the other guy, so Mr. Gee can calm down and put his doubts to rest. But hold on, Mr. Gee ain't buying it. He argues that she conveniently forgot the whole condom thing when they first got down and dirty. Oops. That you were in a, you were having sex with two different men. Yes, Your Honor. All right, that's what makes paternity doubt. Now it's time for Mr. Gee to play the father card. He tells the court that he occasionally tries to channel his inner dad with Messiah. Oh, how touching. But wait, Miss Kate slams him with a denial, claiming that his family doesn't show any affection towards the poor child. Burn. 
Mr. Guy, however, wants to be the ultimate superhero dad if Messiah turns out to be his flesh and blood. But hey, if he's not the dad, he's just gonna shake it off and move on. You think that you treat him just like he's your own son? Of no. Of course. No. His mother's saying that is no, not the case. No, he does not. Uh-oh, Miss Burns is not budging an inch. She's certain that little Messiah is not Mr. Guy's mini-me. Oh, the suspense is killing us all. It's time for the much-anticipated DNA test results, folks. Drumroll, please. And the verdict is in. Mr. Gee is not the father. But hey, Mr. Gee still wants to be there for little Messiah, because who needs biology when you've got a heart full of love? Miss Cates, on the other hand, is feeling a tad embarrassed that her claim didn't quite hit the bullseye. She promises the court that she'll go on a quest to find Messiah's real father. Are not. Mansa is on a mission to find out if 20-year-old Dylan is his flesh and blood. Mr. Mansa was dragged to court by Dylan's mother, Miss Sayre, for allegedly not paying child support. But hold your judgment, people, because Mr. Mansa claims he never believed he was the father in the first place. Oops. In a stunning twist, Mr. Mansa shares with the court that he was sent to prison for five years because he never bothered showing up to the court proceedings. Oh, what a stand-up guy! Fear not, dear viewers, Mr. Mansa is here today, seeking the proof he so desperately needs. You see, back in the day when he was sent off to prison, he never received any concrete evidence that Dylan was his offspring. And he's got a theory, folks. Miss Sarah, being the crafty lab worker that she is, might have cooked up the DNA test to pin the poor kid on him. Oh, the length some people will go to avoid parental duties. Well, well, well. The judge delves into the matter and discovers that Miss Sayre's DNA report conveniently lacks any samples collected from Mr. Mansa, except for those trusty results claiming he's the father. How convenient indeed! Can we get a round of applause for Miss Sayre's exceptional lab work? I don't think it happened. I think she worked in the lab and that she's had this thing <laughs> manufactured. So. This is what so movies fun. are made of. Now hold on tight, because we've got a family reunion in the courtroom. Dylan and Mr. Mansa's son Chris make their grand entrance to shed some light on how dear old dad has been treating them. Dylan's not exactly on good terms with Mr. Mansa, considering the whole uncertainty surrounding his paternity. But fear not, Chris is here to save the day. He claims to have always been a brother to Dylan and pledges his undying brotherly love. Aw, how heartwarming. Oh look, Mr. Mansa has been dutifully paying child support since his release from prison. Quite the responsible citizen, isn't he? But here's the kicker, folks. He still has no clue if he's the real father. Talk about blind dedication. I love Chris, though. We've spent a lot of time together. Your brother. Yeah. We're going to be brothers no matter what. Drum roll, please. It's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. The DNA test results have been conducted not once, but twice, just to be extra sure. And the verdict is in. Mr. Mansa is not the biological father of Dylan. Shock and astonishment fills the air. Miss Sayre calmly asserts that she never tampered with the previous DNA test and she knows exactly who the father is. Oh, the suspense! Who could it be? Will we ever find out?